when Nikola Tesla was in his late 80s, very old, and he was given a big awards dinner in New York where the world was thanking him for all the incredible things that he had given to the world. And he said, Nikola Tesla spoke to the audience, and he said, I have to tell you how I got my ideas to do what I've done. Your brain as a human has nothing to do with your creativity with your ideas and your understanding of things the brain is designed to do only one thing and one thing only it is to control the mechanisms of your body it controls the electrical impulses that go to your your muscles so that you can walk so you can run so you can climb it controls your body's muscles it controls the movement of the human body It controls the blinking of the eye, the swallowing of water. It controls everything in your body. It's nothing more than a controlling mechanism for your human body. But when it comes to your imagination, your creativity, the ideas and concepts that come out of you, we have as scientists no idea in the world where your spiritual perceptions come from where your thoughts come from we have no idea at all all that we know is it has nothing to do with your brain your brain does not give you inspiration it merely takes care of your body and so therefore where do your thoughts come from when the great composers were composing the be- beautiful music where do those ideas for the for the music come from when you get people who are writing profoundly important books where and we say they were truly inspired where well, we know it wasn't in their mind it came from outside of their brain so it implies that our inspiration is being we are being overshadowed is the term that i use overshadowed by some kind of a higher intelligence in the universe something out there is feeding us information and it's called inspiration we are being inspired and some people are just naturally pick up on inspiration from out there wherever it comes from and they can create beautiful music beautiful art they can design rockets they can design lasers <laughs> televisions all kinds of strange and wonderful imaginations in the human mind but it does not come from your brain it comes from out there and so when you listen to the composers of music uh you can tell they were inspired they didn't just read it out of a book if you understand what they were doing they're not just picking sounds that sound nice no it was mathematical it was very deep understanding of the of the creation of the universe the breathing in and the breathing out of the universe it had to do with an occult heavy duty science of vibrations rhythms and how the and, and they could change the whole concept of a nation by music i mean the germans used the music from wagner and, and it inspired in america has music that inspires the nation because there is some kind of a mathematical science to it there's a science to put music together and of course in hollywood you have what is called programmed music in a movie when something evil is going to happen you get a certain kind of of music when something is going to be funny and silly and and to be laughed at you get that kind of music behind it so it's programming you your mind with music so that you are inspired to get the idea out of the movie so inspiration is not part of what the brain does inspiration comes from outside the brain 
I believe that our the human family, the human people on the earth, their brains are a computer. We're an incredible computer. It's alive. And that computer runs on wiring. And we're told that we, our blood vessels and our nerves are miles and miles of nerve endings in our body. That's the wiring for the computer to all the body, to control the body. The brain needs to be able to send messages out to certain nerves for you to do certain things. And so the brain is a computer, and I believe that what we call God is some kind of a, for a lack of a better term, some sort of a Wi-Fi unit. You can have a hundred different computers in a room and they're all on a one Wi-Fi unit, which means all 100 computers can be doing 100 different things, tuning into different different places and doing different things and they're all getting it from one source from a Wi-Fi unit. And so something is guiding our destiny. Something out there is guiding our thinking And if you've ever seen a flock of birds, large, large flocks of birds with thousands of birds, and you see them all flying in one direction and instantly, in in an absolute one-second instant, they all turn, all the birds turn and go a different way. And they all then flip back and turn and go a different way. How come all of the birds knew to turn at that very one-second point And they all turned and went a different way together, like the fish do. We call it schools of fish. And I've seen it where the fish are thousands of fish, and they're all sailing along together and instantly. All of a sudden, they all go in a different direction. How is that possible? One incredible story about how the brain communicates with the heavens, and the heavens communicate with you. And we know that the planets and the sun and the moon affect your brain. And the planets all have a resonant frequency, and each one of those planets, when you were born, affected your mind. When you were born, you came out of your mother into the world, and the sun has a profound electrical feel on the earth that is causing incredible stuff to happen. Our weather, the moon affects people. It affects the female. It affects her uh, her periods uh, once a month. is caused by the moon. The moon pulls the oceans of the world. We know that the moon affects the oceans. Why? Because they're water, and the moon affects water. This is why your body is like 76% water. So how does the moon affect you at the full moon? Well, it causes you to get silly and crazy, sometimes really crazy. So we call you a lunatic. Why? Because the moon is affecting your blood. It's affecting your brain. The vibrations in your mind are being affected by the sun, the moon, Mars, Jupiter. And so women are from Venus and men are from Mars, meaning our minds operate differently because of the way we are born and and who we are and the vibrations in the brain. It's a very big subject about inspiration. And, And the inspiration comes from out there. When Nikola Tesla was in his late 80s, very old man, he was given a big awards dinner in New York where the world was thanking him for all the incredible things that he had given to the world. And uh, and he said, Nikola Tesla spoke to the audience, and he said, I have to tell you how I got my ideas to do what I've done. He said, every evening before bed, I will put a, a, a notepad on the little table next to my bed with a pen or a pencil. And he said, and every morning when I wake up, there's a written invention on the pad. Somebody comes into my room at night and writes down an invention. And and the next morning I get up and it's all written out for me. And so I just go to my laboratory and follow the instructions and I invented radio. Or I invented uh, alternating current. Or I made this invention or that invention. 
And today, Nikola Tesla has lit the world and given us radio and, and all kinds of wonderful things this man gave to the world. But he said he was inspired by someone writing it down when he was sleeping. And so that's inspiration. To inspire comes from the word spire, to like perspire, inspire. And so spire is to breathe together. Breathing is spire. And so someone was breathing into him their ideas and coming from somewhere else. So that was one point I wanted to make about inspiration is it doesn't necessarily come from you. It comes from out there. 